being patient. Today, we're, if we're being patient perspectives, um, that's our series when we look at um, dementia from the first person perspective, what it's like to buy, be diagnosed, um, live with dementia. Today, we're joined by Don Kent. He's joining us from Tyler, Texas. Um, Don um, was diagnosed um, with Lewy body dementia in 2017 after going to seven neurologists. It took seven neurologists to diagnose him. Don, thanks so much for joining us. Great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So I think the first thing that really comes to mind is why and how would one person have to go to seven neurologists to find out what was wrong? Well, I think uh, there are several factors interacting. Number one is the screening process for most dementias in doctor's offices that are general practitioners and in neurologists in general as well, all screen for memory. And my memory has was fine and has been fine. And memory, of course, is the main element and can be the main element in Alzheimer's. But it doesn't necessarily have to be impaired early in Lewy body. So if you're number one, if you're relying on screening based on memory only, you're going to miss uh, the uh, other presenting symptoms uh, that can be first before any memory problems in Lewy body. Number two is uh, I was relatively young. <laughs> I was at below. Uh, I was 64 years old when this all started, and neurologists are skeptical to make a diagnosis of someone real young unless it's very very clear to them and uh, and so you get that factor in it as well uh, and then I think you you also hit with Lewy body you hit just a general lack of knowledge uh, about what that can present as even among neurologists and I, and, and that's somewhat surprising to me as a as a lawyer I defended doctors and I made my living defending medical malpractice cases. And, and so I certainly get along with doctors and respect them very much, but it is surprising to me that uh, there is so little, or was, I think it's growing now, but there's been so little knowledge about the real ins and outs of Lewy body dementia, <clears throat> and um, particularly in the early stages. Yeah, and I, I want to talk about that early stage because you've said to us, you've just said it wasn't memory. You didn't have a problem with your memory. I mean, you're obviously you're a lawyer, a very capable lawyer, and um, you know you it wasn't symptoms weren't presenting themselves as cogn cognition. Uh, tell us a little bit about what first when you first noticed something was wrong, and what was the symptom? Well, I, I think looking back, I can tell that the. Uh, that my thinking became a little cloudy even early on, but the most uh, symptom I recognized first was uh, two things. One, a change of personality, and I didn't notice it so much as my wife and my son that lives here in Tyler also noticed it and mentioned what's wrong with dad, and, and that is I've always been a laid-back person, rather slow to anger and, and, and relatively cool under pressure. I mean, I'm a I was a trial lawyer, so in the courtroom, you have to remain that way. And all of a sudden, I became very explosive personality, angry, uh, saying mean things to people, which I'd never done before. And about the same time, I was also felt a loss of my sense of taste. I, I say loss. To me, it was a loss. I've now learned over time that it is a uh, hallucination. It is a taste hallucination. And... Of course, with Lewy body, we can have hallucinations of all of our different uh, um, senses. So uh, mine was a loss of sense of taste and accompanied by a rather abrupt uh, personality disorder. You know, it's it's really interesting you say that that because I was just about to say, but Lewy body is often identified first with hallucinations, but the fact that losing your taste could actually be considered a hallucination. Yeah, I, I think it is. I, it it has come back some, and but my taste has never returned to normal since since I began noticing it. It it's different every day. I mean, I can some days I can't taste sweet. Some days that sour tastes sweet to me, and sweet tastes not sweet, and, and it can change day to day and within the day. And and 
so many symptoms of Lewy body are that way, which we'll talk about at some point, I assume. So um, it's uh, it, it's an odd thing. Most people have their sense of smell affected uh, and nobody, none of the were particularly impressed that I'd lost my, I was complaining about a loss of sense of taste and uh, it, they didn't say much about it until Dr. Notman in the, at the Mayo Clinic when I got to him. Hi everyone, sorry about that. Uh, welcome back to Being Patient Perspectives. We lost you for a minute. We're back talking to Don Kent. He was um, diagnosed with Lewy body dementia in 2017 after seeing seven neurologists. So we're back again, uh, apologize for that. We had Wi-Fi problems, um, but, but what Don and I were talking about were some of the earlier symptoms um, that he experienced and he was telling us he had lost taste, um, so food tastes different um, to him. And we were just talking about personality changes um, as well. Um, so John, I wanna pick up there. Um, when, you know, usually people, when they um, talk about personality changes that come early, it's usually associated with frontal temporal lobe dementia. Um, I haven't really heard of it with Lewy body, but that may be my own ignorance. So tell us a little bit about um, personality changes as an early symptom. Well, uh, I think uh, it, it, with Lewy body, it can be any of the uh, symptoms of, of dementia and they can present in any order and not necessarily ever present. So uh, in my particular case, uh, that was just a one of the first things that appeared was the uh, a change in my personality accompanied uh, or a simultaneously a, a sense or a perceived sense of my loss of sense of taste, which I think more accurately I can say now is a taste hallucination. Um, I, I continue to have that. That has stayed with me from day one since I first started having problems. So. So do we know, um, you know, for example, Alzheimer's attacks the hippocampus um, and that's the area that we associate Alzheimer's disease. Is there a certain part of the brain and front, frontal FTD is more the frontal cortex of the brain. Is there a part of the brain um, where Lewy body tends to attack first? Well, I'll tell you what the revised criteria for diagnosis of Lewy body dementia says. Uh, <clears throat> and they're talking about what dementia is. They say essential for a diagnosis of dementia with Lewy bodies is dementia defined as a progressive cognitive decline of sufficient magnitude to interfere with normal social or occupational functions or with usually usual daily activities. Prominent or persistent memory impairment may not necessarily occur in the early stages, but is usually evident with progression. Deficits on tests of attention executive function and visual perceptual ability may be especially prominent and occur early. So uh, in the criteria document, they specify that those areas, loss of attention, executive function, and visual perceptual ability uh, generally occur early. And that's so, certainly been true in my case. So you haven't had, a, have you yet had a, any problem with cognition and memory? Uh, cognition, yes. I simply cannot function as a lawyer anymore. And that was early on, too. I, I didn't realize it at the time. But I was certainly, uh, by the time I got to the Mayo Clinic, I was still saying I can't stay focused long enough. My memory, uh, my ability to stay focused on task and, and to read a medical journal article of 20 pages, I couldn't do it. And, and uh, you can't defend doctors in malpractice litigation unless your mind is functioning at its highest level. And mine was not and has not been has not returned. I mean, I simply uh, I can't do that. And, and again, that's it has to be in accordance with what your normal daily function is. And my normal daily function was representing doctors. And I just can't do it anymore. So and couldn't do it at that point. Yeah, it's it's interesting how often we hear that from people as 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 it's more of almost like an ADD type sy symptom. They couldn't hold their attention for as long as they used to, right? And Absolutely. across different dementias, we hear that. That's really interesting. Um, so, I mean, there is a bit of an irony in this that you were 
um, defending people for medical malpractice, et cetera. But, and yet it took you seven neurologists to get it. And not that it was malpractice, but it was more like, uh, people, doctors, medical professionals didn't know how to diagnose you. So tell me a little bit about that experience. Why was it so difficult for them to diagnose Lewy body dementia? Well, again, I think it's still uh, probably still heavily, you screen for memory first. And if you don't have a memory issue, you're, you're put down the list of having a, uh, a dementia and, and with Lewy body, that's just can be dead wrong. And, and, uh, you know, I've known a, a gentleman who died from Lewy body at age 86 and he never had a memory issue at all. His memory was fine up until the time that he died. So if you just are looking for memory to have a problem uh, and, and a Lewy person doesn't have a memory issue, you're, you're going to be very slow to diagnose it. And you couple that with being young and you couple that with your functioning within normal limits for the general population. Um, those things confound them. Uh, I would also mention that I was never asked about my sleep until I got to the Mayo Clinic. And, and that's six neurologists to me and didn't ask me about my sleep patterns. I'd never heard of Louie, so I didn't know what to expect. And, 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 and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I have a tendency to try to diagnose myself because I think I have, I know more medicine, you know, than I should. And, and I'd never heard of Louie and, 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 you know, that was obviously uh, an issue too. I mean, uh, so what, what is, what happens with your sleep? Did you have disrupted sleep? I mean, did you go from like a normal sleeper to all of a sudden not being able to sleep or, or what happened? Well, uh, no, a key feature of Lewy body dementia is REM sleep behavior disorder. And REM sleep behavior disorder is where you act out your dreams and physically. And, and the two most common are you're acting out, you're either in a fight or you're being chased. So imagine acting out those things. And those were the two most common forms I had. Uh, but I had, I've had it for 20 plus years before I was diagnosed. Uh, and that a REM sleep behavior disorder is a key diagnostic feature in Lewy body dementia. 85% of the people with Lewy body dementia have REM sleep behavior disorder. So now, that's really interesting. I mean, I wonder if that's related to the hallucinations, because in a way that's kind of like you're having a hallucination, but in your sleep, t describe to us, what is that like? Do you get up and, and act out your dream or what, how can, does it manifest? You can, uh, more commonly people fall out of bed. They, uh, Dr. Notman asked me, have you fallen out of bed? No, uh, but I've given my wife a black eye, you know, I mean, I was in a fight and, and bam, you know, I hit her in the, in the eye she was i was thrashing about I, what happens with me is i really flail my arms and i kick my legs and i roll and twist and turn and i mean you're in a fight I, i've been in a fist fight a gun fight a knife fight a laser fight every kind of fight you can imagine i've had it and then i'm being chased and so you know running on foot driving a car driving a boat i mean I, and, and it's just very active sleeping i will put it that way do you remember these dreams when you wake up? Not at all, not at all. That's really interesting. Okay, we're getting a lot of comments in here. Um, so uh, one person is actually saying um, that um, it, this what you're describing sounds like his mom going back at least 10 years. She was diagnosed with Alzheimer's less than two years ago. Um, and his mom was also diagnosed with ADHD years ago. Um, she was given a CPAP machine a few years ago too. Um, so, you know, it's so interesting when we do these interviews because this, this gentleman who's writing to us right now, we always get people like this. When you talk about your symptoms, they're saying, wow, that sounds like my mom or my husband, my wife, because um, this potentially is, um, we, we spoke to a while ago, Dr. Dog Arslan, who's one of the leading experts in the UK on uh, Lewy body dementia. And he believes that Lewy body dementia is the most misdiagnosed dementia. Um, and he believes it's the number two most common in the world. Um, so. Those are correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, just thinking about that, if you know the, the fact that you had to go through seven doctors before you were actually properly diagnosed, 
um, means there's probably a lot of other people out there who maybe never get this diagnosis. Now, one thing, one thing that, that Dog Arslan told us was the hallucinations usually come first. Now, what you're providing insight um, to us is the fact that, like, we always think of hallucinations as things coming out of the wall or things jumping at you, you know, because I've heard people describe them that way and they're, they're terrifying because they look really real and you can't distinguish what's a hallucination from what's reality, right? But what right. you're describing is something different. It's, it's more subtle. It's like your taste has changed. I would have never said that's a hallucination. Well, <clears throat> you know, just after it happened, I, and I learned you can have hallucinations of all your senses, and I had this change in my sense of taste, and and, and it really does change. And, and so it's it's really, you know, I, I envision a Lewy body just sitting there right there on a part of the brain where the taste buds, you know, send their signals, and, you know, just messing it up, you know, messing up the signal. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, you know, I didn't have uh, hallucinations, visual hallucinations is what most people think of. I didn't have those early, or I didn't have those initially. Uh, I was diagnosed in March, and I, at, uh, at the Christmas time of that year, I was really worried about possibly hallucinations starting, and my wife and I came out of the store, and I looked over to my right, and there was this big yellow rubber ducky tied on a top of an SUV, and I went, oh my gosh, Cynthia, is there a big yellow rubber ducky tied on that SUV over there? She looked over there and went, yeah, there is. <laughs> Uh, so I didn't have hallucinations then, but probably after the first of the year in January, I started having visual hallucinations and periodically have had them since. So um, I saw snakes and spiders and people. So, yeah. So I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, that's all right. I'm using that. Um, no, so I'm just curious, what was it? So you, you, your journey led you to Mayo Clinic, um, and it was probably the, your instinct and your wife's instinct that there's something really wrong and we're not getting the right answer. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm an East Texas boy, and, and uh, you, you know, men here, boys growing up here in East Texas, you know, uh, depression uh, is fine for women, but men don't have depression, you know, <laughs> and, and and then I learned something different. I started thinking about killing myself and, and uh, mentioned it to my wife and it scared her. And, and luckily so, she got the guns out of the house because about a week later I was looking for them. And, and when I'm having that kind of problem, it's time to get me somewhere else. And my doctor, uh, Stephen Corrier here in Tyler, knew that as well. And, and they consulted, my wife consulted him and they said, well, let's, let's see if we can get him in Mayo. And luckily I was able to get accepted there. So up to that point, had anyone mentioned dementia to you? Had anyone said, we, we think you may have maybe Alzheimer's? Because oftentimes people with Lewy body are misdiagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Absolutely. Uh, I was told I did not have Alzheimer's. And to me, that thought meant I didn't have uh, dementia because I really didn't know of any other dementias at that time. Uh, and, and I, you know, I went to Mayo Clinic. Uh, and actually, at that point, there were there was some concern about me possibly having vascular dementia and because of a change on my, uh, in, in the CAT scan on, on, uh, brain, on imaging and, and there was a fight about it. Some radiologists were saying that looks like it and some were saying, no, there's not. But, uh, and actually that's what Dr. Notman specializes in. He told me after talking to me for 20 minutes, I didn't, didn't have that, but, um, he continued to work me up. So, uh, you know, that's how I got to the Mayo Clinic. And, and, and uh, that's when I started learning about other things. I really went up there figuring they're going to figure out what's wrong with me. I was, you know, Dr. House was going to figure out what was wrong with me and give me the magic pill and I'd be back to trying lawsuits again. But didn't quite work out that way. So what was it that, and we, we're getting more questions and I'm gonna to come to the questions in a minute, but I, I think this is a really important point. Um, why what? and what was it 
like if so if we're somebody who believes that we or our loved one may be experiencing Lewy body, what are the questions we should be asking our doctor to get that diagnosis? So what did the Mayo Clinic do? As you mentioned sleep as one, they checked your sleep patterns, but what other things were happening inside the Mayo Clinic that you hadn't been able to get from the previous doctors um, who were trying to diagnose you? I think the biggest thing was I got a full, uh, the full battery of neuropsych evaluations, which test every area of your brain. I, I really don't think you can make any diagnosis of a dementia without getting that test. And it's a test that incorporates a mini uh, IQ exam with it. So they measure you based on your individual IQ and how you perform in comparison to your IQ, as opposed to just measuring you, whoever you are, based on the general population. And so I had not had any of those tests before. I had some tests, but they were all measuring me on the general population. And I was regarded as normal. But that full, it's about a five, six hour test, uh, really exhausting. And, and they test each separate area of the brain and, and they can break down which part of the brain's malfunction. So, uh, and that, of course, showed me to be performing well below my IQ, two standard deviations below my IQ in the visual perceptual portion of my brain, which was a key diagnostic indicator with the uh, REM sleep behavior disorder diagnosed on the sleep test. So um, we're getting a question asking, did you have any other issues driving a vehicle? Um, did you have you know other issues like driving a vehicle other than hallucinations? Uh, the answer is I made an agreement with my wife. You, you got to understand I'm a lawyer and I go around speaking about my disease. Uh, and once I started having hallucinations, uh, which was in the early part of 2018, um, I, I, I had agreed with my wife that I would stop driving. Uh, it's just not smart. Uh, I, yeah, other than having hallucinations, yes, I, I have trouble with distances. I was pulling up to a curb thinking I was there and I might be eight feet short of it. Um, so there were issues that were showing up about my visual perceptual ability, mainly uh, distances and also surfaces and, and whether something was up or down, going up or down a hill. I, couldn't, I can't perceive that sometimes. And, and so I elected to immediately stop driving after I had uh, visual hallucinations. Yeah. And what about someone else is asking about cooking? Did you ever cook before? And can you still cook if so? I am. I, I can grill. And that's about I it. I think you're a Texan. You're probably at the barbecue. <laughs> no, I am uh, very poor at that. So, so that I'm, never factored in. Well, were there any other things during your daily life that you could no longer do? I mean, driving is one, you know, anything. I mean, obviously work, you said you couldn't hold your attention. It was more like an ADD type of, of symptom. Um, was there anything else in your normal life that you usually would do that you, you couldn't do anymore? Um, well, I used to like to read and I just don't have the uh, ability to stay concentrated and focused to read uh, anything of any length or difficulty. It may take me, I still try to read and I, I still read a lot, but it's just work. I mean, it's not like I could, I could sit and read, you know, medical articles for hours and now I just, no way. You know, is that just, because, is that because you're, you're not absorbing the, or you can't read like the, the information it's hard to follow because you're not um, keeping up with it in the way that you used to, or how would you describe that? Yeah. It, it's, you just can't stay. I can't stay focused long enough. I, I'll read it and I'll go, okay. My mind starts wandering onto something else. Then I'll go, okay, what, what was I reading? And then after, after 10 minutes now, I just got to get up, go do something else. I mean, I just can't stay in a mind of reading for any longer than that. I, I just, uh, it just doesn't exist anymore. So. Right. Um, someone is asking um, saying, um, you know, I pardon the sensitive subject because this must relate to a symptom that they've noted about their loved one, but have, have your bathroom habits changed due to LBD? Uh, luckily at this point, uh, no, but that is not uncommon. 
Uh, I'm a member of the uh, Lewy Body Dementia Association uh, Facebook group of only people diagnosed with it. And we talk about what was going on and, and discussion about those issues is common. Uh, and, and I can expect that that's something will probably develop, uh, but uh, is that incontinence or what what is the what is being discussed both incontinence uh bowel and bladder um yeah uh if anything i might occasionally have a little incontinence of of urine uh sometimes at night that i've never had before but so far it hadn't been a problem and and nothing like it can be so so yes that that is very typical that's one of those things uh that can occur um but with Lewy body, and you know, it's known as a multi-system, multi-sense disease, you know, that can affect all of the uh, um, cognitive abilities, sleep, autonomic nervous system. And that's part of the autonomic nervous system issues. And boy, those drive us crazy because those impact your quality of life more than any. And, and some of them are treatable and some of them are not. So, uh, uh, that's a big element, it can be a big element of this disease. So I want to talk about treatment because um, when we interviewed um, the researcher from the UK, Dog Arslan, and talked to him about Lewy body, the one thing that really, um, uh, you know, really stuck with me is I said to him, you know, okay, so people know how to diagnose it. Why do? Why is it so important that people know the difference with dementias if there's no cure? And he said because the Parkinsonian drugs tend to work better with Louis, people with Lewy body than they would with people with Alzheimer's. So, what? What are you taking any medications? And if so, what are you taking? And do they work for you? Well, the answer is I take multiple medications. Uh, but none of them are to treat the Lewy body. They are to treat symptoms, uh, which hopefully improve your life. Uh, I was told by Dr. Notman, uh, you've been diagnosed with a non-treatable, non-curable neurodegenerative brain disease that will ultimately be fatal if you're not struck by lightning or something else happens to you. So um, the, is the interesting issue, of course, Parkinson's is a very big element of Lewy body. It's the abnormalities to the to the same protein uh, and and actually Parkinson's dementia is in the Lewy body dementia family uh, and only the difference is cognitive symptoms occur first it's called uh, Lewy body dementia uh, or dementia with Lewy bodies and if Parkinson's occurs first it's called and then the dementia sets in it's called Parkinson's dementia which Robin Williams was ultimately diagnosed with but uh, the drugs that treat Parkinson's uh, can have a very bad effect on, on your memory and cognition. And so uh, it's a balancing act. Dr. Notman told me I didn't need to come back to see him because he's been trying to play that game for years and he just decided not to treat it anymore because uh, it causes more problems. So the younger doctors and, and the ones in the field that, that, that are really specialists will play the game of trying to treat the parks and symptoms um, uh, while while not having adverse effects on your cognition. Um, so uh, I am not on any cognition medication. I have not had any significant Parkinson's problems, so I'm not having Parkinson's treatment. Uh, I do treat um, restless leg syndrome as a part and parcel of my sleep behavior disorder. And there are medications for restless leg that help, uh, and I'm taking that. Um, and and I, I take uh, I, the autonomic nervous system dysfunction. People with Lewy body almost always have some sort of heart issues, which I got diagnosed with during this journey. Um, I, I just want to stop you there because that's really interesting because they always say what's good for the heart is good for the brain. So do we know the relationship? Why? Why, uh, if you have Lewy body dementia, do you have heart issues? Well, because Lewy body acts on autonomic nervous system dysfunction, can act. And uh, the heart is the autonomic nervous system function. Uh, again, you won't see a lot of literature about this. It's starting to emerge. I, 
it, among my group in the, the Louis body of, but I would say probably 35% or 40 of us men have pacemakers. I do. I had a pacemaker put in and all this, uh, and it actually helped. What's what was my going on at the time. Um, and it really unmasked my dementia element, my cognition issues when I got my heart issues treated. And, uh, and, and so that has, I became a lot more aware that I was foggy and my mind was slow and my mind wasn't working once I got my heart issues treated. Um, so it's a big part of it. And, and you got to understand that with little Louie body, no two patients present the same. You may, I may have sleep issues. Another Louie body person may not. Uh, I may have, um, uh, you know, somebody may have motor function issues, Parkinson's. I don't. So, you know, when you're talking with me, you're talking with one person with Louie body and it, it probably is not the same with anybody else. Now we have similarities. I think the biggest similarity of all, and to me, the most classic thing about Lewy body is you just can't function mentally some days, and yet some days you're fine. It's this huge variation in cognition. And, and people, we often get referred to psychiatrists because of that, because they think we're faking it, and, and uh, we're not. I mean, it is, and there are some days where I feel now I could go back to work and practice law. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting. We, we call that periods of lucidity, but you also see that throughout Alzheimer's in a way. I mean, I like even looking at my own mom, um, some days we're like, oh, she's really not doing very badly today. And other days we're like, wow, she really has declined. So it's it's interesting because neurodegeneration, you 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 know, often think of it as just a slippery slope, but it's not like that. It's It's often like this, right? It goes up and down and up and down. Well, I use a, a presentation. I use a uh, a graph in my presentation about uh, progression. Uh, vascular dementia is defined as a stair step type dementia, uh, dementia, and it go it goes you know like this, and then step down. And then uh, Alzheimer's tends to be a pretty steady curve down, and and Lewy body goes like this. I mean, it's just up and down, up and down, up and down. And I'm talking about these variations in your mental function can be day to day, they can be minute to minute, they can be hour to hour, um, but, but literally I can wake up in the morning and not know who my wife is. I've only been married to her 45 years, you know, and- A long you know, time. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that can be, and, and you know, it's real hard to practice law when, when you don't know whether you wake up tomorrow, whether you're gonna have a brain that can function even knowing who your wife is. So, um, uh, and, I, and people had a real hard time understanding that with Louis, and, and it is a very, very big element. I can imagine that's terrifying. Um, so, I want to ask you when you got when you went to the Mayo Clinic, um, what type of scans did you get? Uh, did you get a PET scan, or um, were, were they, did they give you MRIs? And what did they see specifically on your brain to know that it it may be Louis body dementia? Actually, all my scans were are fine. Uh, I had done a lot of those done. So yes, they did do uh, the PET scan in at the Mayo Clinic and it was normal, uh, interpreted as normal. I'd had multiple MRIs before, they reviewed them. They did not believe that there was anything indicative of a vascular event in the, in the brain. And, and uh, so my scans have been uh, up to this point, uh, essentially normal. Uh oh, did we fade out again? Oh, here she is. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Um, uh, that's really interesting um, because you know that there's no there's no visual evidence of. I mean, because we can usually see in Alzheimer's, we can see actually brain shrinkage, right, and hippocampus um, shrinkage. But in Lewy body, you just do we know why we can't see it? Oh, it can be seen. There, there are definite. Uh, uh, indications that it, in more advanced, as it, as the disease advances, I suspect I will have some things show up, but they just aren't there yet. Uh, not not where they can show on imaging anyway. 
So, so John, you were given um, the official diagnosis a few years ago in 2017. So you now have been living with a diagnosis for a few years, but you know, you said previously there had been things, I mean, how long did it actually take to get that diagnosis? How many years? A little over a year. It took over a year and a lot of doctors um, mm -hmm. before you were able to get that diagnosis. I would how mention that the average in Lewy body is five neurologists. So I beat it by two. Wow. <laughs> um, so how would you describe um, how has the disease in your mind progressed over the last since you've gotten a diagnosis? Do you feel like is it is it up and down, up and down? Do you feel like you're getting worse? Are you seeing um, more uh, new newer symptoms? Um, what is it like for the past few years? Uh, actually, I give a speech on, on this as well. Um, it's the good, the bad, and the unknown. The good news is I've had three uh, one-year follow-ups now, and the documentation is it's progressing, but very slowly. And of course, this disease uh, progression can be very slow, uh, can be rapid. And again, you don't really know when or why that is. They, they have some speculation, but no hard evidence. Um, and, but my, you know, my uh, performance on all the tests that you do to check progression shows slight progression, but very slow. Um, I have experienced hallucinations in all categories since the diagnosis. The visual hallucinations reoccur periodically. I had them a couple of weeks ago um, is the latest time. Uh, the visual hallucinations, I've also had smell hallucinations. Uh, and hearing hallucinations as well since. Uh, and again, they come and go periodically. Uh, so my symptoms have, I've added symptoms. Uh, I, uh, then the, there are days when I simply can't function. I call those my Louie days. The days I wake up, I really don't know who my wife is. I'm really not sure who I am. Uh, I can't do a whole lot. I've got more Louie days um, than, than the last couple of years. So the the number of those days seems to be increasing. And, and uh, particularly with this COVID-19 thing, staying at home has been very adverse to my uh, uh, my condition. I, I've had more of them since this all started. I think it's just staying cooped up and not doing what I like to do. I'm a firm believer in that having a purpose is a big help. And, and that purpose for me has been advocating for dementia patients and for uh, a Lewy body dementia awareness. Um, and, and I really love that. I, I speak, I, I'm used to that. I was a trial lawyer. I enjoy that. I'm not a writer. People say, write a book. And I go, I'm not writing a book. I'm speaking. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's just uh, what I enjoy doing. And, and this has not been able, I haven't been able to do that a whole lot since this started. And yeah, we're hearing don't. that. We're hearing that from a lot of people. The isolation of COVID is really not helping um, their dementia. An interesting question has come in, and we haven't really touched on this, which is um, someone is asking us, has diet been adjusted at all, like the use of ketogenic diets to utilize ketose instead of glucose? Because um, the explanation behind that is, you know, glucose is what normally naturally fuels our brain. Ketones have the ability to cross the, the brain blood barrier and also fuel our brains. Um, so so it still has to uh, be researched more, but a lot of people believe that boosting the ketones is really beneficial to your brain. Um, are you on any special type of diet? Uh, um, you know, I should be. The answer is the Mediterranean diet has, has tended to be the one that they recommend with Louis, although uh, uh, the new one, what's the craze lately? I can't remember that one, but... Uh, you know, yes, diet is important, and I've not been good on that. Uh, again, what happens to me is that when I'm going well, I tend to make good decisions. But when I get into Louis times, I don't make good decisions, and I don't really know that I'm doing that. Right. And that has happened with me both for diet and with exercise. I feel better when I'm on a proper diet. I feel better when I exercise regularly. I have trouble staying with that because I mentally, when I go through Louis periods, I don't make good decisions and, and, and I don't know that I'm not, and that I'm making bad decisions. It just kind of 
and, and I, I, I'm just now coming out of beginning to come out of a about a month long funk, uh, which I gained 10 pounds. I hadn't been exercising. I talked with my uh, neurologist the other day. You got to do this, Don. We got, you know, and, and so, yeah, I'm back on it again. And, and right, right after I was diagnosed, man, I, I exercised every day at the gym. I did, you know, and you got my weight under control, but I just haven't been able to maintain that. And a lot of it has to do with, I just make bad decisions when Louie's working on me pretty bad. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, we hear that as well. It's just really hard to get motivated when you have dementia at certain points. Um, but what about, um, you know, you talk about um, uh, exercise and, you know, the importance. I mean, we, we've definitely established in Alzheimer's that exercise benefits the hippocampus. You actually add brain cells when you do aerobic exercise. Do they know, is there a connection between Lewy body and exercise? Well, I think it's a Lewy body and any, I mean, uh, any dementia and exercise. I think it's, it's, it doesn't really, the form of it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. It's, you know, exercise, proper diet and proper exercise help you no matter what. Uh, uh, and sleep. Uh, to me, probably the biggest factor, uh, those three are very important, but the bigger one for me is the sleep because when I'm not sleeping, that's when I get really, really in the, in the, gar in the tank, so to speak. So, and that happens to me more often. I, I'm on a sleep program called Right Sleep or Sleep Right. I think it's Right Sleep, but uh, with a neurologist that I, that I know, and, and that has helped me, but it's hard to maintain. And, and, and again, I, um, it's, uh, it once I sleep better, then everything else goes better. I make better yeah. choices and, and, all, and all that. But yes, diet, exercise, and sleep are three cornerstones of making the best life you can with this disease or any dementia. I, think. I just want to touch a little bit on, more on the depression because you talked about the depression and you talked about it almost like in the beginning, it was almost a symptom. You weren't a depressed person um, and you felt so depressed that it, you know, you actually had suicidal thoughts. Um, you know, as we saw in the Robin Williams case, um, he obviously was driven to a point of suicide. What is depression then also um, a, a common characteristic of Lewy body, body dementia, or is it just really um, a consequence of it? Well, Dr. Notman, knowing, knowing my background from East Texas, where, you know, men don't get depressed, told me, he says, Mr. Kent, you are, your depression is not causing your illness. Your illness is causing your depression. And, and of course, I did see a psychiatrist at the Mayo Clinic, and they diagnosed depression. And and I've been on antidepressants since then. I've had recurrent suicidal thoughts and had to adjust my medicine on that as well. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's part of the disease. And, and uh, uh, it's hard for me to say that and admit it because most of my life I would say, you know, women can be depressed, but men, you just got to buck it up and drink some orange juice, buddy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I um, but... I, I can't tell you how helpful this conversation is, Don, and we're we're really grateful to you for being honest and sharing and also for your advocacy to make people more aware. I mean, by the number of comments we've gotten on this talk, it's really an area that people need to know more about um, diagnosing Lewy body, what the symptoms is, how they manifest, you know, and who better to tell us than someone um, who has been diagnosed. So thank you. Uh, is there is there a way people can follow your advocacy or, um, you know, where you speak? That we can uh, yeah, I actually have a YouTube presentation. Just uh, uh, get on uh, YouTube and Google Don Kent, Lewy Body Dementia, and you can listen to me for a whole hour talk about Lewy Body. If you're ever in need of something to help you sleep, that might do that for you. <laughs> uh, and I am going to be having more things recorded and on uh, my local organization. It's called Alzheimer's Alliance to Smith County. I'm on their board, first person with dementia to ever be on their board and and I work with their education director uh, to bring awareness about not only uh, Alzheimer's but the other dementias including Lewy body 
and they're, we're going to do some, uh, I'm going to do a video for them that be on their web page. I'm working on that. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, just email me. I'm, I'm glad to talk anywhere, speak anywhere. Um, and, and you can reach me through my email at dkent at tyler.net and I'll be happy to, to respond to you. We'll, we'll post that too um, in the comments section. Thank you so much, Don, um, for sharing your story. We wish you all the best in COVID, um, a difficult time, but you know your advocacy is appreciated in person or on video. Um, it still has the same impact. So know that you know it's well worth your time and we're very appreciative. Thank you, Deborah. I appreciate it. So if you want to see more of these interviews, we always post them on beingpatient.com. Um, go to our website, sign up for our newsletter. We'll let you know about upcoming talks. If you know anyone or want a topic um, um, that we could delve into, approach an expert or someone who has been diagnosed with dementia, please let us know and we will be sure to get in touch. Um, I think these, these talks are meant for our audience um, so that they can ask questions to either people diagnosed or um, those who um, are experts in, in their field. So thanks very much for watching. Um, we also appreciate any donations you could give us. This is really um, a site that we rely on donations to bring you um, guests like Dawn and also experts that we approach. Um, if you want to find out more about our mission, please go and, and click on do the donate button and you can see a video and more information. Thanks so much for watching. We look forward to next time. And again, thanks so much for uh, to Don for sharing his story.